Squeeze on right. in here, Jamie Buck. Oh, oh sorry. Let's get cozy. <laughs> That's legit. Don't touch anything. Don't okay. swallow. Don't breathe. Got it. Don't chew loudly. Don't chew loudly. Audibly. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. Jamie Buck will be I- very upset with you. <clears throat> It was just distracting. I don't like mouth sounds. What do you want? <laughs> they are very unattractive mouth sounds. Are they? Yeah. The mouth sounds were hot. <laughs> Three out of ten. Yeah. yeah. Some people like them. Yeah. Name them. Not Jamie Book. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Jamie Book does not like mouth sounds. You know why? Because she's a 10 out of 10. Oh. Mm-hmm. And mouth sounds are a 3 out of 10. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. <laughs> so can I tell the story about my dog? Oh, my God. Please do. What kind of dog do you have? Um, he's a lab mixed with something else. Okay. Mm-hmm. His name's Cooper. Cooper. Cooper Sardines to Baby Kelly is his full name. I'm sorry, say it one more time. <laughs> Super Sardines da Baby. Cooper. 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 Sardines da Baby Kelly. Wow. Yeah. Who added the baby? So Nathan, my son, wanted to name him and I said you can have the middle name and he did Sardines da Baby. Okay. It's, it's all one word. Oh, but so he one did word. that intentionally, knowing it would be Da Baby Kelly. Correct. Nice. Yeah. Genius. What a guy. And he was a good boy today. He was a, he was playful, energetic. He made a few new best friends, and he ate all his dinner. Do you know how old he is? He will be two on January twenty eighth. Wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. Are you having a party? Are you one of those? A I'm dog not one of birthday those. party. That's mm-hmm. a people do. I know, and I love it. I just, I. Uh, oh, <laughs> Jamie. Um, that, one out of ten. I want you to know, on record, that was a mouth sound. That was a mouth sound for sure. Yeah. A big one. <laughs> that was larger than I was expecting. Sorry. That was worse than his mouth sounds. I wasn't there, but I. <laughs> Thank I know, you. I know that Thank that you. Was much worse. Okay, well, just wait because he's about to chug these egg whites, and it's gonna be. I'm, Ew, I'm that's what that is. Going to move this over this way so that I don't make mouth sounds. I'm gonna have some champagne, mm. and I'm not gonna make mouth sounds. I feel like you're both judging me right now. <laughs> <laughs> I was judging. Yeah. It's okay. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> no mouth sounds, though. We're good. All right. So to kick this off, I have something interesting. Did you know? that Illinois residents can legally bury people in their backyards? I had no idea. Like human beings. Human beings. I have so many follow-ups. Like in caskets, I assume? Or just raw dog and dead bodies? (laughs) (laughs) Depends on your local zoning rules, but there are no laws that prohibit home burial. So your neighbors can have a full-blown dead human in their front yard. Backyard. A front yard's not prohibited. I feel like front yard's According to this, property. it says backyard. Okay. Because this front yard, I feel like, would be big enough Well, that's fine. Body. Yeah, I'm thinking when you say front yard across the sidewalk. Sure. Mm-hmm. But who has a front yard across the sidewalk? He's talking about, like, the, the city. Oh, like the parkway. The green space. Okay. Yes, the parkway. the parkway. Gotcha. Okay, so. Thank you. Someone, Sorry, someone dies. Right. Do I need to make a phone call before I bury them? Yeah, or do I'm I just... sure you do. I'm sure you have hey, to... Hey, just so you know, burying this person back here... Um... And so let's say you sell the house after the body. Do you has... have to disclose it? Well, wouldn't you want to take it with you? Or you just leave it? Oh my god. I, I mean, didn't even think about that. No, leave it where it lies. You're going to leave grandma. I mean... Leave her where she lies. Would you rather if leave grandma leave or disturb her dead body yeah i would not exhume that the body. sounds disrespectful well legally it's definitely not something you have to disclose like it's not on... no it's not first of all i don't care if it's legal or not have you ever seen poltergeist <laughs> no i don't believe in those wait okay two things here watch it is it scary seriously well it depends i don't on do your... scary no movies nope not fuck scary on. at all i don't even want okay to fuck you <laughs> Right off the gate. I know. I told you. It's not scary. How do you not believe in ghosts? Do you believe in ghosts, Terrence? Yeah, they're real. I just don't. I don't think anything happens to our bodies once we die, or our spirits, or our soul, like all the Well, no, above. your body's going to be in the backyard, but the rest of you, is your soul <laughs> and your spirit are going to be walking around rattling cabinets. And I don't think everyone turns into a ghost, but... 
good people or bad people turn into ghosts? I, I both. I think Have it you depends. Seen the good place. Yes, no. love the good place. That's what I want to believe in. There's what a is... good place and a bad place. Except for the good place is really the bad place. Yeah, but I want to believe in season four. Is this? A, <laughs> I was going to ask. Okay, this is a, not a movie. This is a show. It's a yeah. TV show that it's highly so recommend it. If I'm going to watch The Poltergeist, Netflix. you have to watch. Did you ask what channel? Yes. Like, do you still have cable? No. Okay. But I'm just. I'm old enough to just say what channel. Yeah. And then you say Netflix, and I say, okay, cool. I wouldn't even question it if you said Netflix was a channel, but. One question. It's on Netflix. Welcome to another episode of Realty Chicago. I'm Jamie. And I'm Terrence. And we are here to share with you some of the craziest stories in Chicago real estate. And if you like what you hear, please tell your friends and find us on social media and definitely leave us a five-star review or rating so that other people can find us as well. And we're so excited to have Jackie Kelly here with us today. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm so excited. Yes. So Jackie and I have known each other for four years. Let's say four, yes. And she is a realtor in Chicago, but recently moved to North Carolina. Queen City, baby. So to start off, Jackie, this is going to be, I think, a question we're going to ask everybody. But um, would you rather be invisible or fly? Fly. Fuck yes. I am. I've been the only one so far. Invisible. Yes. What are you gonna do with that? Sneak Nothing. up on people? No. I'm just gonna. Be That's what invisible. I said. I'm just gonna be Creep. invisible. Oh, definitely <laughs> eavesdrop. Wait, wait, hold on. I just burped. Was that a mouth noise? It was, <laughs> but it was a sexy one. Oh, was it? Yeah. Why? Because it wasn't on the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, mine weren't on the microphone either. They were just. They were definitely <laughs> on the microphone. Loud. It traveled. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't, what am I gonna do with invisibility? I don't. I like when people know I'm there, you know? No, I want to just walk down the street invisible. It's a part of like the ghost thing. It's the part of the ghost thing. Yeah. I can go to the grocery but store and be unbought. Well, no, it'd be weird to see a cart just being pushed without a person. I get that, but. But that's the fun of it, right? That's what. That's true. That's I like would have fun with it. So yes. you would haunt people being invisible. Well, now that you mention it, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It'd be very fun. So what if the ghosts that you think you're seeing are actually just invisible people pulling pranks on you? That's fine. Yeah. That's cool. As long as I find out who they are. I would love to know. Well, you can't. They're invisible. They can yeah, just come fun. clean. I would eventually. I would want to fly. I would too. <laughs> that's what I said. I mean, we got three... On Team Fly now. Three Team Fly, one Team Invisible. But like, think about the logistics. against the world. Yes. Bugs and how high are you going to go? I'm going up there. You yeah. said you were going to go as high as a plane. No, I'm not going up there. I'm going to walk. I'm going to be invisible. I don't think I'd want my ears to pop, but I'd want like a really sweet view. Yeah, which I don't think you have to get that high for. No. Think about like the Hancock. You got a sweet view and it's what, 80 something stories? I mean, there are other buildings that like I'm content with floor eight. Yeah. And their rooftops floor are Floor eight. <laughs> all right, Jackie, we're all patiently waiting for your two truths and a lie. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Except for maybe not so patiently. I want. Can I read them? Oh. Like, do you have them written? Or do you read them? How do we do no, this? No, you tell it to us. Please hold. We're Just waiting. Do it. Go ahead. No, say make your, make your mouth noises. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh, my goodness. Okay. I don't even feel bad about that. You shouldn't. <laughs> mm-hmm. You see? It's so hot, Jamie. Sorry, this Jackie. Is, is this that... is what we have to deal with. Are you done? Yeah, I'm done. Okay. My two truths and a lie. I've picked up clients in traffic before. I've fallen through a floor during a showing once, and I'm licensed in three different states. So I think yesterday when we were talking about this, we guessed that you were not licensed in three different states, mm -hmm. but then you ruined that for us <laughs> earlier today. Yes. In my defense, I didn't know that they didn't know the answer already. How? You didn't tell us I the don't answer. know. I just thought that you guys, that it was for the audience. No. Like you for are all of us. Audience. We are the audience right now. We I know under, nothing about you. I understand you. that now. So we know that that's true. So Terrence, it's between falling through the floor 
or picking up clients in traffic jams, am, which both sound feasible. And now that I'm talking about it, sorry, Terrence, go ahead. I am truly hoping that you've fallen through a floor. That's I weird. have a, <laughs> I have a memory where I feel like you said maybe my brain is making this up, but I feel like you told me once you fell through a floor. So are those your final answers? That's my final answer. And if not, make it up. I want to know a story about you falling through a floor. <laughs> I've never fallen through Damn. a floor. Damn it. Mm-hmm. One time my ceiling fell on me. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Your own ceiling? Yeah. Oh. In an apartment. Not good. Day. But no, I've never fallen through a floor. Okay. I mean, both were feasible. I have picked up a client in traffic jams before, though. So, like, how did that work? Yeah, let's hear it. Okay, so it was recent. Um, so it was in Charlotte. Sorry, it's not Chicago. Mm. Um, but I'm on my way to a – my son plays travel hockey, so we're on the way to a hockey tournament. As soon as we got on the highway, the power lines fell across both sides of the highway. So we were stuck there for almost three hours as anyone else trying to get exit the city and get on the highway. I mean, there were thousands of cars backed up. It was crazy, but we were front line, which was nice. And so after a while, everyone's getting out of their cars or whatever. And this one guy had said, I'm on my way to a showing. And I'm like, oh, a showing? Are you looking to move? And he goes, yeah, I'm trying to buy a house. And I'm like, hmm. do you have an agent? Yeah. <laughs> He did, but we stayed in touch, and he was one of my first clients in Charlotte. Oh. Oh, oh like you picked up a brand new client oh, in traffic. This was the, my most recent. Okay, so the way I interpreted this question was your client was stuck in a traffic jam, and you, like, rolled up and picked somehow up. and picked them up and was like, get out of your Uber, uh, get in my car. That's what I thought, too. Sorry, guys, I should have rephrased. <laughs> Would you have changed your final answers? No. Yes. Okay. Okay. Oh. I would have hoped for the falling through the floor, but I would have figured that with your personality, you could have uh-huh. picked someone up in traffic. It was fun. And it's a great story. I'm pleasantly surprised by the turn that took because that's not what I was expecting. Mm-hmm. So that's amazing. Awesome. Well, that sounds like 10 out of 10 already. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. Yeah, I'm just killing it. Once the power lines were released, we were all, we're all speeding out of there. But I kind of got to... Make a mouth noise? No. Go ahead and it's let it It's because we're drinking champagne directly from the bottle. I me. I got here and the first thing Jamie did was open up the bottle of champagne. Like it was like, hey, how are you? Oh, this, yeah. This was a fresh bottle. I'll be right back. Okay. You we're make gonna, your nose noise. You. We will be sitting here and judging. Should we hide? I think we should just leave. <laughs> Let's just roll. She'll never know. Nah. Even though she's staring right at us right now. While she's. Oh. In, in... Well, that was hot. Mm-hmm. Jamie, so when we started talking a few minutes ago, I said you were a 10. Uh-oh. And since then, mm. I have to be honest. I'm coming this way. You are coming. <laughs> <laughs> Don't finish that sentence because it won't be in the podcast. Mm. But my question. I was going to say 11. Oh, see? Yeah, boom. Mm-hmm. Oh. You've gotten hotter. And my question is, I'm have, real. I, have I also gone up a point or two? Where was I originally? You were at three. I was at a three. I was at a three because I made mouth noises yesterday. Mm -hmm. Can I at least be an average five? You can be a five. Boom. Yeah. Five more to go. Let's work on things. (laughs) There's room for improvement. Okay. I will. I'm open to criticism. Okay. Constructive Um, criticism. Constructive criticism, of course, Mm -hmm. not judgmental criticism. Yes. Be curious, not judgmental. Mm -hmm. Ted Lasso, Jackie Kelly. Oh. Do you like that? Believe. (laughs) Did you just quote Ted Lasso and then add your name at the Have end? you ever seen The Office? You miss oh. 100% of the shots you don't take. Wayne, Wayne Gretzky, Gretzky, Michael, Michael Scott. Scott. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I got that on Nathan's sweatshirt this weekend because they won the tournament. So it's like champions. And then the decal on this side says, I'm so good your mom claps for me. <laughs> Ooh. I oh, yeah. love that. Oh, I, I'm, I'm like, are you wearing that school? Sick bird. I know. To his 11 year old friend. They're nine. nine. It's even worse. <laughs> I am going to use that, that as an adult. It should be an adult phrase, but it is on my nine year old son's hoodie. That's fine. Yeah. I'm so good. Your mom claps for me. Uh huh. If we ever have merch, that's we it. need that. Whatever the company was, and we'll just put our name right underneath it. You we'll quote them, and then you put... And then we'll put our yeah. names. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we just went through this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, done. Oh. Love it. What else you got first, Jackie? What was your bit. other <laughs> truth? 
that I'm licensed oh, in three licensed states. three states. So what are the states? Illinois, North Carolina, South Carolina. So Charlotte's right on the border of North and South Carolina. Okay, that makes sense. So it's kind of foolish not to have both licenses because a lot of people move over the border. But a lot of people relocate from bigger cities. So like we have a lot of New York and like Tampa and San Diego, Chicago. Down to Charlotte. Yes. Mm-hmm. Would you recommend Charlotte as a city to live? I love living in Charlotte, yes. What's your favorite part about Charlotte? I like its proximity to everything. Like, our closest mountain to hike is 40 minutes away. We're two hours from the coast, and it's just easy to get everywhere. Like, we've been in under four hours of driving. You can get to Knoxville, Jacksonville, Virginia Beach, Myrtle Beach, Charleston, like, all these places that are cool, not just Wisconsin Dells. (laughs) We have Starved Rock, okay? Chicago, but... We have Starved Rock <laughs> and Six Flags. Yes. So I, it's just it's just been fun. I love that. Any negatives, like critters or uh, The bugs are bigger, okay. for sure. I When I first moved into my place there, there was a dead cockroach, which they call palmetto bugs. Okay, that's the biggest bullshit when... I see cockroaches here and people are like, oh, it's just a palmetto bug. And I'm like, what's the difference? Well, cockroaches here are a bad sign. Evacuate, burn the house down, leave. Which is crazy because I grew up in New Mexico and literally was killing cockroaches on the daily. Like yeah. cockroaches do not bother me, but I know it's a huge thing here. Because they're like dirt infested cockroaches. Like they like mold and like... Sinks. Oh, so they're different kinds. City of cockroaches, cockroaches are built different. They are. They're built different. I mean, but the southern, like where I'm from, where I'm, well from now, they're wood cockroaches. So the only reason why they're inside is like they blew out of a tree into my apartment or something like that. So we are wondering, what is one of the most interesting things you've ever seen at a showing? So I was showing a, I think it was a two-unit property. In the suburbs. All the weird shit happens in two unit or like multi unit property. Oh, for sure. Yeah. It's always the yeah. other tenant that just has things. Well, and the tenants don't usually leave for the showings either. Right. So this tenant in particular did not want to leave for the showing. And we walk in and he was like, come on in, let me show you around. Here's my fucking snake. Like outside of the cage thing. It just around on him. his body. Like the snake was practically sizing him up and we were watching it. We're walking around the house and I don't really notice why my clients are being so distant and like just off put. And I'm looking around and this guy has, I don't know snakes, but it was wrapped around like twice his body and then around his shoulders. And then as soon as I noticed, I was like, fuck, we gotta go. We gotta, we cannot stay (laughs) and watch you get eaten by your snake. Okay. We We have things to do. I have houses to sell. So, did your client put in an offer? No. No, that was not the one. That was not the one. I don't, I actually, I don't know if the snake was a deterrent. It just wasn't in general, but I know plenty of people that wouldn't have even stepped foot inside that. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know how I didn't notice right away either. I'm actually shocked that you didn't notice right away. Well, I think because I was last in line to get in and there were like four other people in front of me that I just, you know, he was the line leader and then there's mm. four than me. So and the I'm first person was like, oh tall. shit. Is that the only one you saw? Yes. Yeah. Okay. In your estimation, how long was it? It's like a 10 foot snake. 20 feet seems like a lot. I, no, that's that'd be too crazy. much. I mean, it wrapped around his waist twice and then around his shoulders. So around his waist? Uh-huh. I, I don't know. It's maybe six feet at least. Six? What like color it? was it? green i have no idea (laughs) this was quite a few years ago this is a chicago story too this happened in chicago but it was quite a few years ago you said it was a suburb bitch i'm sorry it was the suburbs of chicago i was gonna ask what neighborhood but never mind (laughs) it was a neighborhood house cross street (laughs) um yeah so that happened what is the most eccentric agent seller or buyer you've ever met my girl, um, who to this day is still like kind of a friend of mine, uh-huh. um, lovely client, was wonderful to work with. I get to her house for the listing presentation. I knock on the door. I think it was her roommate or something came to it. And I was like, hey, I'm here for the listing presentation. 
And <laughs> she's like, oh, she's sleeping upstairs. Do you want to go wake her? And I'm like, not necessarily. Like, do you want to go wake her? <laughs> and she goes, well, she knows you're coming. So it's fine if you just go up there. And I'm like. Why is she not awake? Okay. <laughs> also, this was probably 11.30 a.m. Like, it's, it's not like so I was like, there at 6 a.m. Yeah, not ridiculous, but also, one, who just stays asleep? Two, this roommate who's just like, I'm not going to go wake her up, even though I live with her and know her. Right. You, random person. Yes, who we've never met before. Okay. So I go up to her room to, <laughs> to wake her up. <laughs> Um, and she is fully passed out. Like it took a little bit. Luckily her son was there. So her son like knew the tactic to like get her up. Wait, and, how old was her son? Um, I don't know. Early twenties. He oh, was okay. home from college. Oh, oh, yes. okay. And, and uh, he is such a blessing. He like without him, the deal would have never went through because he just managed everything for us. Every amazing. new detail just blows my I brain. Because when you said sweet. she's asleep, I'm like, okay, she's 25. It was a Saturday morning. Oh, no. Homegirl's like maybe in her 50s. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not what I was expecting. Mm, nope. Mm -hmm. okay. And her roommate was also. A roommate. That. Okay. Okay. Yeah. In her 50s with a roommate. Yes. Best friends. Very adorable people. Okay. Um, and they own this place. This did they have cats? How many? I don't know. Um, but they would jump everywhere. And so she had. Oh, yes to the cats. Piles of tinfoil like on every single shelf. So the cats wouldn't jump up there. And Side note, does anybody know why that's a thing? The cats don't like the sound of the tinfoil. If you lay it flat on a countertop, like a cat jumps on it and it makes that like loud tinfoil sound. So cats don't like that. But usually once you train them not to do that, they stop jumping and then you take the tinfoil away. So balls of crumpled up tinfoil literally wouldn't do anything. Like a cat would probably play with that actually. Okay. <laughs> In my Home girl, thought it was working. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Well, maybe because there was just no room for them to jump up instead of. But no, they were still up there just with the tinfoil. Yeah, oh. that's what I figured. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm walking through this house. She's showing me the house. We finally wake her up. So I'm here now, maybe for 30 minutes, and nothing has happened. We've just gotten her out of bed. We're walking through the house, and every single thing is painted. I am talking doorknobs, sink pedestals window frames the tile on the floor she like re-epoxied herself and she was asking me too like oh before i list should i like repaint this i'm like just don't touch anything just don't Stop. please don't do anything this is the best for you like we're not gonna do all this right mm. um so she was just kind of crazy there were little things here and there like in the middle of us putting the house on the market like a tree fell on the roof there was like a big hole in the roof luckily this was in a fantastic location so it wasn't gonna have a huge problem selling okay but obviously like very strategic marketing and like negotiating here anyways i get it under contract and the fun doesn't really stop i need to read this text message she's got receipts wow you guys it's actually crazy in north carolina which this was in north carolina the buyer's write a check to the sellers kind of as their earnest money it's called due diligence money but it's written out to the sellers and the sellers can cash it that day like let's say it's like ten thousand dollars the sellers can take the ten thousand dollars and go to disney world the next day even before the house closes so it's usually delivered straight to their mailbox so i'm asking her like did you get the due diligence money whatever this is her response to me and i'm gonna read the whole thing so just bear with me here i'm so excited okay so I send her the receipt of the tracking delivery. I said, it says it was delivered today. She goes, <clears throat> after a quick stop at my local ABC store, which is our liquor store in Charlotte, I'm heading directly to the dark underbelly of Charlotte in search of the finest drug dens and crack houses that the Queen City has to offer. It would be bucket list level if I could find a drug lord named Mad Dog or Crank Master. I will know I have found who I'm looking for when I see an enormous bald man wearing a pinky ring guarding a cinder block building surrounded by a chain link fence topped with razor wire. Inside, I will find the boss man by the glow of track lighting that highlights his rhinestones, encrusted grill, and life-size velvet portraits of Biggie Smalls that adorn the walls of his home. I'm also hoping to find this gentleman seated in an enormous golden throne upholstered in purple satin. Any kingpin worth doing business with is certain to have white tiger on a leash and peacocks that are genetically altered to not have assholes so they don't shit on the rotating platform beneath his throne. Also, the chaka has arrived from the buyers. 
This is the greatest story I have <laughs> truly ever heard from a buyer. I'm crying. <laughs> My response. Quite the scene. I'm glad to hear it's there. <laughs> I mean... How long did it take you to respond in a professional manner? This was my face. Uh-huh. For like a while. Was, yeah. yeah. It's like, okay. That pretty much stuff like that happened through the entire transaction. And the Did you <laughs> Did you ever just like engage or did you just always keep it professional? She was chill, so you know, it didn't have to be like very by the book, I guess, so to say, like the way I interacted with her, it would have been Clearly. weird if I was super professional. Yeah. Towards yeah. Her, you no, know? it wouldn't have worked. Um, but yeah, I just kind of let her do her thing. Like I communicated a lot with her son who was very responsible and Back got home from things college. done. Yes. Um, but she was a wild card. I'm sure. I love this lady. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You want her, you want her number? No. Okay. So you sold the house. The house is sold. Yes. Did she buy anything else? No, she did not buy anything else. She um, had to do something else with the money. Drugs. Clearly. (laughs) She had to go find her drug pen. I drink. She was a big boozer. From the... There was one showing feedback that was, house has great potential, everything went well, but there was a woman in bed that did not wake up. Uh, Oh, my God. (laughs) At least it wasn't just you. (laughs) You see... These are the stories that make me very, very thankful that I stay at home or in my office. I think it's fun. And I don't have to go out into the field. Yeah. Remember the joke I told you yesterday? The joke was, what's the difference between mortgage brokers and real estate agents? Their mouth noises? (laughs) No. Mortgage brokers are boring. Mm Mm-hmm. And this is why. Safe is the word I like to use. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Different words. Safe is boring. boring. Mm -hmm. Remember that one time when you drug me to that building that was abandoned and boarded up? Oh, my God. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, safe. So I had some clients who... I've got to know, by the way, do they ever buy anything? No. Okay. Um, So they were interested (laughs) in multi-units in places of the city that I was uncomfortable going to and so I recruited Terrence to come with me because Smart. it was four units and we show up and you know how some places have like the metal the guard dog thing the guard dog yeah yes so it's like metal over the front door and over the first floor window so that people can't break in yes I've seen that that's what we walk into no okay. power and then well, why would we power? discover there's no power. Mm-hmm. The place had definitely been ransacked and gutted for all the copper piping and wiring. And mm-hmm. I'm still not convinced there wasn't a body in there somewhere. Oh, we didn't even go into the basement. Well, it would have been prohibited. I mean, if you, they should have just buried it in the backyard. <laughs> yeah, right. Put it right, in the backyard. Right. Yeah. yeah, that's fine. But it was inside. I'm convinced. We couldn't even go into the basement. It was pitch black. We made the executive decision not to go into the yeah. basement. Well, see, here's the thing. We walk in, and Terrence gets a phone call. And he's like, I'm just going to stay here. Are you serious? Look, business never stops. So I FaceTime my (laughs) clients because they weren't there, which is why I brought Terrence with me. Oh, you? it was just a FaceTime. It was just a FaceTime. Yes. So I'm FaceTiming him. He's like, I'm going to go take this phone call. So I had to walk around this place by myself. First of all, I could hear you the entire time. You could hear me. I knew exactly where you were. I just stood where it was safe. Why didn't they pursue the property? Oh, it was too much work. Yeah. Bega- I mean, and literally they never the place, bought anything? They have not. Interest rates went up and, Sorry. you know, for some investors, it just didn't make sense. They were taking out a HELOC to pay for it. Mm-hmm. So the interest rate on HELOCs are two points above, right? Two points above regular interest rate. They they rival credit cards. A little bit lower, but they rival credit cards. Line of credit on your house. Mm-hmm. It's a variable rate, just like your credit cards, but it's lower than a credit card. Mm-hmm. And you can get more money than a credit card. Okay. Depending on the credit card and the person. Right. So, you know, it's a good product. Anyways... Yeah. That's the one house Terrence has ever had to tour. First of all, we went to like three we that day. We went to three, yeah. Yeah. One of which that was, a scary was like occupied. To be with. Thank you. Yeah. One was occupied. And we... I don't remember that one. You don't remember that one? I do. That's the one. It was raining that day. And the agent met us there. And 
we went through it and toured, and one of the apartments was being heated by the stove. Everybody was there. Good source of heat. We walked into one, and guy was sitting there rolling a joint, and he was having fun watching TV. We're like, hey, how you doing? We walked mm -hmm. through that one, and we went to the back. It smelled like pee, and so we decided that probably wasn't the one for the mm -hmm. client. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've had to bring reinforcement on showings before. It's nice. It is kind of nice. See? Yeah. Forewarn, my favorite app. Honestly. Do you know what Forewarn is? Yes, I want it. I need to figure out a way to get it. You can you pay for us. it, I think. Can you? I don't think anyone can pay for it. Like, I think you have to be in the industry. So for everyone listening, Forewarn is an app available to real estate agents where we can put in a phone number or name. And it's a minimal background check. So you can see traffic tickets <clears throat> or assault and battery or, you know, make a decision. Yeah. As you to can whether see you're going to meet someone. Yeah, you could can down you see $4,800 like $4, worth of tickets sometimes? Um, a woman on my team got in trouble because she was looking up famous people. I, it was me. No, oh. it was not you. Because <laughs> Forewarn called me. And they're like, yes. you can't do that. And I'm like, well, it was fun. It was Friday <laughs> night and I was having fun. <laughs> no, this is someone else. Well, I think we need to look up Terrence. Look him up right now. Let's what? do it. I am a... I am My not. A, over there. I am not a criminal. Is it all accurate? Wow. Isn't wait, wait, wait. Fun? Terrence. Wait. I don't. I don't live in Lake in the Hills or Arlington Heights. Why is there? A, hold on. Who is this person? Sometimes it could be like whoever had your phone number before. Possible crim. Oh, I have criminal records. Hold on. What did I do? Oh, I was speeding. Okay, that makes sense. How fast are you going? Um, speeding on the freeway, one to ten. I didn't do that. When was this? Mm. Where was this? I know how you drive. Shut up. Where was this? There's it a date on there. April 2019. I got to figure out where I was April 28th of 2019. Okay. Hmm. All right. Oh, oh. 26 to 30 above limit. Oh, that's fast. T-bone. I mean, that sounds like me, but there's no date. Yeah, it's a little blotchy. The yeah. results, but you can get a good gist of who someone is and if you're comfortable to meet them alone. Or okay. Yes. But and there is like a match section. So on each violation, it'll say whether it's just the name, whether it's a name and birthday or mm -hmm. name, birthday and social security. And nobody I've ever murdered is on there. So we're good. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah. great. I feel so much better. They're buried now. in the backyard. It's fine. Right. Mm -hmm. Perfectly legal. Well... You're allowed to bury people in the backyard. I don't yeah. think you're allowed to kill people and bury them in your backyard. Well, how else am I going to bury them? Well, they just naturally decease. Like if you wanted to yeah. bury <laughs> your sister. <laughs> so but I was face, just though. in Key West, Florida. Nice. And they can't bury bodies because it floods so much there. <laughs> so the <laughs> cemetery. What's that not funny? I'm sorry. No, it's kind of crazy. The cemetery, all the caskets are above ground. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not okay with that. When you say above ground. No, they're like, do you want me to pull up a picture? Please. Like, like no, are they just in sitting a, in like a they're in coliseum? A, what are those mausoleum. things? Mausoleum. No, it, it's just like caskets and stones and stuff. Just hang on. Are they anchored down? Are they cemented down? Because I feel like grave robbing is a thing. I'm sure there's some sort of system that they use. You can't just go lift it up and say hi to Aunt June. That's just... Oh, I feel like I've seen pictures of this before. They're stone caskets. Okay, that's I a little was bit different. Like a wooden I'm, right, I'm thinking just a little box with the handles and it. yeah. Well, I'm sure there's like systems and procedures, you guys. It's not like the Wild West. It actually is it's the Wild West. It's Florida. Yeah, Come it's on out. <laughs> like, <laughs> wow, they can't bury bodies. They cannot bury bodies. No. Is that the entire state of Florida? I don't know. Jackie, what time does it say on the little pod track? Fifty three oh seven. And seven How seconds. long do you want? Because I can keep talking. Yeah, give us another story. Oh, yeah, God. please. Well, I don't know. Ask me a question. Without giving the address, tell us about your favorite property that you've ever closed. Closed? Closed. Well, you guys, this is a slam dunk for me right now because it just came out. I oh, got the yeah. sixth largest sale in Illinois last year. Really? Uh-huh. Congratulations. So that's obviously going to be my favorite. Dollar amount or square footage? Dollar amount. That's what I'm talking about. I know. Badass, right? Okay. So I had a client about four years ago who needed to short-term rent in Chicago. So I helped them do that. And um, I stayed in touch over the years. And 
one day they reached out to me some sometime last year and said they wanted to buy a condo and they were sending them over to me and they were like $4 million and whatnot. So then we started going to see the places and they wanted to up their budget a little bit. So mm-hmm. they found one six and a half million and we closed on it. Nice. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. Was yeah. this in Chicago? Yes, it was. At what? the St. Regis. Uh, 363 East Wacker Drive. Ooh. Chicago's finest address. Downtown. <laughs> Okay, I've been in that building. <laughs> I just love it. <laughs> um, you're paying for the location of yeah, the views. Yeah, 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 yep, yep, yep. For sure. And the amenities and the status of being in the St. Regis, they get access to the hotel amenities. I mean, the connections you can make in there are just crazy. Yeah, you that's know? fair. Yeah. What do you... I think it's not the coolest product I've mm. ever sold, mm. but it's definitely like my favorite. Okay. I was... <laughs> I mean, well, for obvious reasons. I was going to ask, like, what do you get, like... Steam showers with mirrors that play HD football or, I mean, it's what what really, does a $6 million condo give I you mean, that? that one in particular, kick-ass views, like 360 of the entire Chicago. What is that? It was not a mouth noise. I think that was a something outside. That was an outside noise. I have a question. Yes. Does your son have that dumb haircut that all kids yeah. have now? What's the dumb haircut? The broccoli cut. What's a broccoli, What's a broccoli cut? Broccoli cut? Seriously? Is that where it's like shaved and then there's Yeah, that. Uh he is a hockey player, so he likes to think he has a flow. Mullet? Oh, I was What's gonna say a mullet. flow. Uh just like long hair that curls on the bottom. Like longer, not super long, but And it just like flips it's out. It's supposed to, but his hair is so it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to flip out. It does not. Where it's like he just took his helmet off mm-hmm. and it has the flip out at the mm-hmm. bottom. Oh, yeah, that's, that's so good for him. Cute, but good for him. Then. But his hair is really straight and stringy, so I don't think he can do much with it. Mm. But he'll learn. He'll know? learn. He's only nine. Yeah. Yeah. He'll figure it out. He'll come yeah. into his own. It's just like humiliating when people want to see him. And I'm like, for you? Oh, my God. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> I'm just kidding. He's so cute. I love him. Do what not edit mean? this out. We're going to keep this in. <laughs> I'm not editing it. We're going gi- to give this podcast to him when he turns 18. <laughs> Here's how your mom really felt about he you. Knows. When you were I nine. tell him all the time, you look dusty, man. Get a haircut. Wow. Dusty is a is a um, millennial term mom, in hockey. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> right. <laughs> you look dusty, kid. Well, they call bad players dust. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Oh. And pheasants. Pheasants is like a big diss in the hockey world too. Oh, so really? Like fuzzy dust. Okay. <laughs> fuzzy dust? Oh my god. <laughs> So that's what I tell him his hair looks like, and it does. And I mean, I could see the pheasant by the stringiness. Mm. Mm. Do you enjoy being a hockey mom? It is the best role in my life. Okay. It is so much fun. The sport is so exciting. Somebody asked me the other day, what's your favorite sport to watch? I'm like, youth hockey. Oh, I love hockey, actually. I think it's my favorite sport, too. It's so fun. The boys, just they work so hard. The parents are all great. We... Our tradition, me and the parents, are we have to do fireball shots before every period for the boys, of course. Of Of course. course. Of course. The one time we didn't, they lost a tournament in the last 20 seconds by one point. Oh. Um, And we totally took that to heart. Like, it was definitely our fault. So You guys didn't drink enough that day. They are like, they're my best friends. All the boys are best friends. We just have a riot every time we're together, which is 15 hours a week. (laughs) I love Jeez. that. What's the sport of North Carolina? The basketball? If I had to say something, I would pick soccer, actually. It's similar to New Mexico. Is like, it? all of our sports teams are trash, except for the soccer team has yeah. been pretty darn good for the past couple of years. I think since I left. I'm but trying to get to a game this year. It's probably the most popular sport that people go to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it looks fun. I'm excited. I got, like, a Ted Lasso shirt for it. Nice. <laughs> Jamie Book, have you ever seen Ted Lasso? I have Lasso? not watched Ted Lasso. You I have to you. watch it's Ted. So good. Apple it's TV. So, good. so it's the greatest show ever. It's okay. three seasons, and it's one of those shows where you watch it and you just you, you feel good. You feel so good. It's like really? you want to be a better person. Aww. Yes. You, you do. You do you really do. It's a feel good mm-hmm. show. I mean, he's just, he's great guy. You can't hate him. You love him. You just have to love him. Everyone loves him. He's like, like huggable Ned Flanders. <laughs> Who's Ned Flanders? From The Simpsons. I have a friend that has a wicked Carl Weezer impression. Who? Carl Weezer from Jimmy Neutron. 
Oh, I didn't really watch Jimmy Neutron. Never watched Jimmy Neutron. Okay. You... I didn't have that channel growing up. I am. <laughs> Nickelodeon? That's Nickelodeon. I didn't have cable. Did you ever have cable? No, never. I never had cable growing up. That's badass. Yeah, my that's, parents I mean, that's a good 12 thing. out of 10. Jamie's a 12 now. Yeah, no, never. Impressive. Okay. I had to watch uh, the Disney Channel at my friend's houses. Nice. Hannah Montana. Oh, yeah. What's your go-to karaoke song? I don't have one. My I Way, Frank Sinatra. Which one? My Way, Frank My Sinatra. Way. The saddest one? The greatest one. It's so good. It's I love that song. I don't know if it would be my karaoke song, but I love it. Mine is um, Breaking Free High School Musical. Well, my partner is a very, very, very good singer, so I feel um, like I cannot karaoke. My biggest fear in life is someone is good at singing, and they sing in a condensed room with me in it. Wait. <laughs> I'm sorry. Say that again. Wait. What? Like, I don't care if you're a horrible singer and we're just goofing around and you're singing to me. I, like, I think it's funny. Yeah. But if you think you're good or are good and you're singing... I get, like, my knees feel weird. I don't know where to put my hands. <laughs> you get anxiety when people are good singing. I hate it. Really? Well, don't ever sing around Mark because it will make you never want to sing again. I would again. throw up. That's how I feel. Yeah. Wow. People are like, Jamie, karaoke. And I'm like, nah. no. No. Mm -mm. mm -mm. Yeah. Well, we can go without him. See, I have no bad. shame. I don't care. I will sing in front of a professional singer all day. I also freeze attention. when I have to pick a song. Cannot decide. Love Shack, baby. It's a good one. It's always a good one. Mm -hmm. See, it's easy for me. If I just if I see the book, I can just scroll. I'm like, yeah, that one. Let's go. But they don't have books anymore. You can't, you can have you ever been to Louis? Well, then how do you request a song? You can karaoke any song because oh. there, it's the internet now. It's 2024, Terrence. Yeah, we're Sorry. not on you cable channels karaoke and stuff. So there's no book like code? Like paper? Book like yeah, paper? Yeah, like paper. And then next to the song, there's like a song years. code, like 1422, and you go up to the little machine, and you no. type in 1422, and then you... You just write down whatever song it is, and then they're like, gotcha. And they just Google it, and figure it out, and mm -hmm. play it. Well, I'm sure it's better than Google. Oh, well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do the words I'm pop sure up, just software. like regular karaoke? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. where, do you, where, where do you do this? Louis um, Pub. Louis Pub, Geo's Pub. Okay, there's so... There's a place in Lakeview. Yep, I know. It's Trader Todd's. Yes. Mm -hmm. So when are we going karaoke? Uh, when are you coming back in Chinatown town? Chinatown is a big, you China. could get a karaoke room. Oh. Yeah. Have you ever been to like back in the day? Because mm -mm. no. I think it's shut down now. Don't quote me on that. But there was this Chinese restaurant in Old Town called, and you could go in there and eat whatever. It was BYOB. So it was like, I think it's $20. You could bring whatever you want. And then at one point in the night, the owner turns the lights down and starts blasting them. Like you could just be eating dinner and shit gets wild and he insists everybody gets on the tables start dancing they do karaoke like i got on the mic and i'm dancing on tables and i don't know if i could say this so I'll just cut it out if i can't but the owner came out i kid you not silver platter with lines of cocaine <laughs> and, oh and they're not open anymore <laughs> it, was, it was my favorite place to go in Chicago. I don't do drugs. I think drugs are cool. I just don't do them. But I, it was such a fun place to be. Like, But these lines of cocaine, though, <laughs> let me tell you. I think drugs are fun. I just don't do them. They like scare Jackie me. Kelly. They scare me. Yeah, Jamie Buck. <laughs> <laughs> yes. She's learned. I'm scared. I'm going to... I have an addictive person. Like, I just don't want to get into it. But I think they're cool. Can I say this on... I don't see why not. It's up to you. It's I, not maybe, a business anymore. Maybe beep out the thing. Drugs are cool. Realty it is Chicago. a business. They have other locations, but I don't think it gets as crazy. Like, you're literally, like, one time I'm chewing on broccoli, and all of a sudden, like, Cardi B just starts playing at full blast, and he's like, everybody get up and party. And I'm like, all right, I'll get up and party. Broccoli and cocaine. <laughs> Let's go. It's crazy. Huh. Whoa. So, karaoke night? Yes. Let's go. My favorite genre is jazz. Oh. Really? Mm-hmm. See, I'm an R&B guy, but they overlap. So what, like, do you listen to, like, Thames? 90s R&B. Let me oh, rephrase. 90s anything is better. 90s R&B. All right, all right, all right. Yes. I'm a Boys to Men. I'm a Brian McKnight. I'm an anything Janet Jackson. Mm -hmm. Oh, we all know. Well, by the way. For anyone listening, Terrence Terrell <laughs> and Janet Jackson. Um, Your thing? By the way, you, you guys heard it here first. Um, she's going back on tour this summer. 
And you have every single ticket? I first of all, I have only bought one so far. They only go they go they go on sale to the public tomorrow. So does she come to Chicago? Yes. That's June nineteenth. No. Where are you going? I'm going to St. Paul. Why aren't you going to Chicago? Yeah. Out of like all the options, you're gonna. Okay, there's a method to my madness. Okay. (laughs) When I got access to the tickets yesterday, the seat was better in St. Paul than Chicago, so I bought that one. I will go two nights in a row. I have no problem with that. I've done it before. I've gone three nights in a row before. Yeah. But I will be front row in St. Paul, Mm -hmm. and I'm going to try to get front row in Chicago. Are you going to um, try and get pulled on the stage again? I will do everything I can to make her touch yes. me again. Wear like a good shirt. I'm gonna oh, wear you've done an, this already. Oh, she's touched me before, and I'm probably going to try to wear no shirt. That's yes. anything I That's can do really to... That's really why he's working out? He goes to the gym? Yeah, I work out for Janet. For Janet. For Janet. I've worked out for Janet since 1987. Fuck yeah. All day. So I just learned, listening to a different podcast, that you can ask for set lists. At concerts, you know what I mean? Beforehand? No, after the concert is over, you can ask for their set list, and, like, each player of the band and, like, the singer all has it, like, taped on Yeah, them. yeah, yeah. Oh. And they'll give it to you if you're lucky. You should do oh, that. Terrence, you gotta that ask. That is a new challenge. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna get the set list. I'm sure list. you have to stick around, like, a while after it's over, but... I have no problem doing that. But if you're front row, you could probably just reach over and grab it. Yeah. No, there's a barrier. I mean, there's a there's a there's a barrier. In St. Paul, Minnesota. Oh. Right. There's a mm. barrier. There's a bouncer. But come on now, he's not that big. Yeah. So you've been working out since '87. Yeah, that's when I became a fan. 1987. So was yeah, that when you were born? No, I was born before that. What year were you born? '85. '85. I'm an elder millennial. I didn't watch Hannah Montana. Were you born? '93. '97. Oh. We're not 97. ten years. No. What that's are you about? Crazy. '98. 94, 7, 6, 97. 95. 95. I'm 10 years younger than you. Wow. Mm-hmm. A lot happened in 10 years. I wouldn't know. I wasn't alive. I mean, you know, Hannah Montana comes out and I don't watch it because I'm an adult <laughs> by then. The Climb, greatest song to ever hit. Okay, guys, I think we're going to wrap this up. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you have any more real estate stories you want to talk about. We've gone off the rails here. It's The Climb. So good. Um, no, I don't. All right. Well, Jackie, we'll have to have you back again because I know you have more stories for us. I'm sure I do. Yeah. We'll do a part two. We'll do a part two. Ooh. Always. Let's see, the, let's see what the people want. Let's see what the people first. want. The if people, people are going like to want Jackie, a part two. Well, thank you everyone so much for joining us on today's episode of Real Tea Chicago. If you have a story you'd like to share, if you want to be a guest, or if you have any questions about today's episode... You can find us on Instagram at Realty Chicago, on our subreddit, r slash Realty Chicago, or send us an email at Realty Chicago at gmail.com. And all of those are spelled R E A L T E A Chicago. And Jackie, really quick, tell us where people can find you. Oh, my Instagram? Yeah, where, or wherever. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I have Instagram, and it is Jacqueline, J A C L Y N, Kelly126 is my handle amazing Mm -hmm. and our next guest i'm super excited about is melissa Tannehill. she's an amazing real estate attorney who owns her own firm and represents clients in real estate transactions business planning and estate planning and she has submitted her two truths and a lie so i'll read them and we can guess what they are hers are i think more personal as opposed to real estate related Um, so one, she has never had a home address with a zip code that did not start with 606. Okay. So she's never lived outside of Chicago. In a previous profession, she sold cars or she speaks three languages fluently. I'm going to go with the car is the lie. I think it's the zip code because she lives in the suburbs. Okay, well, well that's clearly the one then. So, but are there six oh six suburbs of codes? I actually yeah, don't know. I think uh, they're more maybe. six zero zero. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, six zero zero and then you get further north, six oh two. Okay, well we guessed well, it. Well, we um, figured it out. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I could be wrong. <laughs> maybe Spoiler she's not alert. in the suburbs. You totally ruined it. We could forward. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Address history. Wait, maybe she's not in the suburbs, but I don't think she's in city proper. Like I didn't think she was in the suburbs, but I also don't know too much about her. I could be wrong, but you that's me. Uh, well, I'm also, I'm kind of just hoping that she used to be a used car salesman. I want to hear all about this. How Sales funny woman. would that be? That's true. Get your pronouns straight. My bad. T-bone. Salesperson. Nice. There we go. All right, fine. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Jamie Book. Thanks, Jackie. Thanks, Jackie. Thank you.